pray. Our Father and you are our God. It is once more and again that you've allowed us the privilege to enter into this season of repentance. A season of penitence that we might receive even more grace, more love, more direction, and more witness. The signs of the cross that we will receive on today, O oh God, is not just for us, we realize, but it's for our community, for others, so that they might see that we are desiring to follow you with all of our hearts and our minds and our souls. So God, we gather in your sanctuary, thanking you, God, for what you've done already. Thanking you, God, for how you have shown your love toward us. Thanking you, God, how you have given us your gracious mercy and so much love and God just as you did it before you have looked beyond our faults and you've seen our needs and so God we come in the beginning of this 40 days of reflection of your love and grace asking today that you would forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness God, we ask, O oh God, that you would create in us clean hearts and renew a right spirit within us. That we, O oh God, as we journey through these days of reflection, as we journey through these days of hope, as we journey through these days of restoration, we pray, God, that you will give new birth in us as you did through your son Jesus Christ and now God I ask that not only that you hear the verbal prayers I speak out of my mouth but I ask oh God that you will hear the prayers of everyone in this space not only their prayers but hear our meditations of our hearts and God as we pray for those who would desire to be here but are not physically in this space. Hear their prayers, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. As we continue to worship, as we continue to look into God's word with purpose, my brothers and sisters, as we gather in this place during this season, a new beginning of denial, a new beginning of hope for all of us. I want us to give hearing to the reading of God's word and we will receive this word through, let me bring it up, just give me one moment. I want us to turn, I'm sorry, my, you know, you depend on these things and yet uh, sometimes you just got to do it the old fashioned way. My contact is a little slow. So always have a word in your hand. Amen. Amen. Here we go, Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, verses 1 through 15. Isaiah, 53, verses 1 through 15. And the word of God is recorded by the prophet
let us share together who has believed our report and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground he has no 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 form or comeliness and when we see him there is no beauty that we should desire him he is despised and rejected by men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and we hid as it were our faces from him he was despised and we did not esteem him surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we esteemed him stricken smitten by God and afflicted but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed all we like sheep have gone astray we have turned every one to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all he was oppressed and he was afflicted yet he opened not his mouth he was led as a lamb to the slaughter as a sheep before its shears in silent so he opened not his mouth he was taken from prison and from judgment and who will declare his generation for he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgressions of my people he was stricken and they made his grave with the wicked but the rich with the rich at his death because he had done no violence nor was any deceit in his mouth yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him he has put him to grief when you, when you make his soul an offering for sin he shall see his seed he shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand he shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied by his knowledge my righteous servant shall justify many for he shall bear their iniquities therefore I will divide him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he poured out his soul unto death and he was numbered with the transgressors he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors the word of the Lord for the people of God and all God's people said amen let us continue to worship God as we turn to our next two music ministry selections in our hymn books our first one at Calvary number 236 at Calvary spent in vanity and pride caring not my soul was crucified knowing not it was for he he died on Calvary everyone mercy there was great and grace was free Paul and there was multiplied to me there my burden so found liberty at Calvary by God's word at last my sin I learned then I trembled at the law I spurned till my guilty soul imploring turn to Calvary all over mercy mercy there was great and grace was free pardon there was multiplied to me there my burden so found liberty had Calvary 
now I've given to Jesus everything now I gladly own him as my king now my rapture soul can only sing help Calvary mercy there was grace and grace was free pardon there was multiplied to me there my soul was found liberty at Calvary love that drew salvation's plan oh the grace that brought it down to man oh the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary mercy there was grace and grace was free pardon there was multiplied to me there my soul found liberty at Calvary everyone the chorus mercy mercy there was great and grace was free pardon there was Apply to me, there my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Amen. Praise God for the songs and the songs of Zion that reminds us of Calvary. Amen. Let us share our second hymn, His Name is Wonderful, found number page 149 in our hymn books, 149. His name, His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. He the ages Jesus my Lord he is he the great shepherd, the rock of all, the rock of all ages, almighty God, almighty God, is he, well we can bow down before him love and adore him his name is wonderful Jesus my Lord he's the great shepherd he's the great shepherd the rock the rock of all ages, Almighty God, is He. Bow 
down before him love and adore him his name is wonderful Jesus my Lord Amen Lord, let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you. For you are our strength and our redeemer, a blessed Savior indeed you are. Thank you, God, for being so wonderful. Thank you, Jesus, for being so great. Thank you, Jesus, for what you mean through your obedience to your Father. May we submit in Jesus' name, we pray, amen and amen. My brothers and sisters, when we gather into another year of Ash Wednesday and Ash Wednesday services, it is a season for us for healing a healing of our wounds, healing of our past, healing of those things that sometimes can separate us from the love of God and even separate us from the fellowship of one another. Ash Wednesday is certainly a time when we begin to become clean with God. We become clean with God and we accept what God says about us. We come across the affirmation that we are his, and, and not only are we his, but we are loved by God. The scripture teaches us clearly in Galatians and so many other scriptures throughout the word. In Galatians 2 and 21 it says, I have been crucified with Christ. And to become crucified with Christ is a person who must willing not only to give up sin, but also to surrender their, our whole lives away and the way that we're looking at things. That's why this season, this book that we are reading for during this time of our Bible study is so apropos because it is teaching us so clearly, so clearly how much and how important it is to have the mind of Christ. And having the mind of Christ requires us to have the spirit of the living God living on the inside of us. Our pretending you all to be something that we're not uh, is something that God can do and restore during this season. The idea that I am almost a perfect Christian is many times our own deception. What our Lord wants us to present to him is not our goodness but our honesty, our efforts to do better. And what he gives us in exchange for our sin and the, is a real solid relationship in his righteousness. But we must not surrender all pretense that we are anything and, we, and give up all of our claims of even being worthy of God's consideration. Because by, but, but by the grace goes I, goes you. Here is what God says about us. He says that there is no righteous not even one. There is no one who understands, no one who seeks God. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And they have together become worthless. There is no one who gives good, not even one. Their throats are open graves and their tongues practice deceit. Except you all that we are in Christ and become like Christ, we are nothing. And that's why we give all praise and honor to God for allowing us grace and mercy and to have redemption through the blood of the Lamb. Everybody, everybody fits somewhere in these categories. And most of us fit, as we've learned last week in Bible study, we fit in a little bit of all of some categories. But this means that all of us are going to have some challenges and some hurts during our lives but because sin leaves us with marks and scars. But aren't you glad today that we don't stay in sin? Aren't you glad today that our scars and our wounds and our emotions do not determine the fruit of our lives, neither do they determine the goal that God has for all of us? 
it is important that we recognize on this season that we are sinners, but we are also saved by the grace, by God's grace. And when we compound all of those truths together, and even though we may have been abused and emotionally hurt in various ways of our lives, we realize that this season is a time of our restoration and our renewal, not only with each other, but also with God. All of us have something in our past that has kept us broken as adults. And if we have not allowed Jesus to heal that particular situation, most of the times we mask our hurts and we put layers of defenses on our wounds and try to bury them so that we will not hurt, uh, they will not hurt us again. How many people have always have said at one time or another, I've gone through that once, but I'm not going to let you take me through it again. But how many of you know that you find yourself in another situation and life will bring all kinds of disappointments, but they are intended that we will grow closer to God and with each other and closer in knowing who we are and whose we are. I was sharing with someone who on this morning decreed you know how people are affirming what they're giving up for Lent and and what they're not going to be eating for Lent and where they're not going to be doing for Lent and I think it's very important that we do that I think that it's a very good practice because it allows us to see the struggle that Jesus had on the cross in his obedience to God and 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 the things and is and as I was saying to someone last night that we don't give up things so that the glory will come to us we give up things so that the glory will go to God because giving up that chocolate or giving up that pop or giving up whatever it might be and adding on some other things will really help you to see and help us to see how challenging it is, it is when we can submit something to God and how the enemy will use that very piece of candy, that very uh, soda, that, that, that very piece of bacon, that all of those things to show us, well, it's really not necessary for us to give up those things. God will still love us. And yes, he will. He will still love us, but it will grow us to love him even the more so that we might understand. This person this morning saying, you know, I've given up things in the past, but I've never added on things I've given up things. I've given up things that satisfied my flesh. I've given up food that I needed to probably give up anyway that was not the best for me. But I've never added on anything. What can I add on? So first we, of course, talked about prayer. We, we add on prayer and then our change of minds and our attitudes in Christ. We add these things on. In fact, it's so easy to do if we just add on the fruit of the Spirit. Add on love. Add on forgiveness. Add on mercy. Add on goodness. Add on happiness. Add on joy. And then they said, you know, but I feel so unproductive in my life then you also have to sanctify yourselves. We have to sanctify ourselves from anything and everything that could possibly clutter the Lord being able to flow in our lives. Human clutter is a challenge. Amen? I say human clutter, whether it's clutter in your mind, in your brain, whether it's clutter in your car, whether it's clutter in your garage, whether it's clutter in your home, whether it's clutter in your bedroom, whether it's clutter on your bed. There are some people who only sleep on one piece of their bread and bed and the other part is their office, it is their kitchen, it is all kinds of things. Clutter, clutter, clutter. As we go through a healing process during this season, as we go through being healed from any kind of damage that may have occurred in our lives, may we sanctify ourselves wholly so that God will be glorified in all that we do. I want you to know as I close this homily on today that God knows you better than you know yourself. And God, no, let's change that. God knows us better than we know ourselves. And yet God chooses to love us. God knows that God knows what he can trust in us. And yet God also loves us in spite of us. God knows our hidden past 
And God still loves us. God knows that what we are praying for and God knows our desire for change. And why did he come to this earth? It was simply because he loves us. And why did he make the sacrifice on Calvary? Simply because he loves us. So I share to you this morning that when emotional blows go inside of us and they are stored in different parts of our body sometimes and we don't understand the complexity of the human life and the journey always have the affirmation that God is heal, here to heal and to restore and to meet our every need May this season of Lent bring us affirmation and confirmation that God is healing, restoring,